I was certainly excited going into TT 2022. Uh, the layoff was, it sort of built the, well, there was a lot of suspense going on uh, and not an awful lot of bike time due to pre-season training injuries and, and whatnot. So I was a little bit apprehensive going into like the first night of practice, you know, how, how I'm feeling and um, that was going on the back of my head. But the absolute out and out like happiness of TT was actually here again after the long layoff was it was incredible. Uh, bike racing aside, it was, uh, I was so excited to get back racing down Bray Hill again. And yeah, I basically had a big, big crash uh, at a motocross track where I basically broke my collarbone, my left collarbone in four places, uh, cracked two vertebrae, uh, did seven ribs, two displaced and had a punctured lung. It's fair to say we we're on the back foot straight away, so it was all a, a race against time really to get ready for TT22 and uh, to really dig deep, deeper than I ever have before. <laughs> Honestly, I had no idea what to expect. Um, no matter how, I'm, I'm always realistic in how I think I'm going to fare up. Um, but also, the little chaff on my shoulder is always saying you need to focus on being number one here, and that's you've got to have high. Uh, you got to have goals and there's no point in going racing if you, you're not going to try and achieve those those high expectations really or goals um but i just i just dug in and just gave everything i had practice week was uh was very good actually um was happy with my bikes the super stock bike i just felt totally at home on it, it it's like an old glove it just it fitted perfectly. We almost parked that after a, a couple of nights just because we were so happy with it. The Fireblaze is incredible anyway, straight out of the showroom it's it's quick but you've got to make them handle and it's a compromise on a TT course is never going to be 100% just that's the nature of the course in my my opinion but uh, yeah other than that you just got to get on twist of throttle. Same as always, really. Just get up, bit of breakfast, nail the coffee machine, uh, <laughs> make sure the girls are all right. Um, I was in a good position, really. I felt, I felt, felt confident in the package underneath me, and uh, I felt confident in the way I was riding. Um, and it was literally just get on it and go for it as, as I always do no matter what bike I'm on I, I mean it could be a pit bike and I'm trying to go fast on it it's just the way I do things I think the three lap race format was was a nice change actually I think it ch you know changed it up a little bit and I think it certainly got the riders thinking pit after one lap you know it was a mandatory pit stop um, so it, it added a, a new dynamic to the race pretty much how it used to be back when it was the production thousand race back in TT old days. I like having a target in front. Um, I've done number one now for two years and whilst it's, it's quite a thing, bit of a bit of an accolade I suppose <laughs> to say you've gone off at one at the TT. Um, I think it ran its course for me and I wanted a, another challenge and to have people in front of you is quite a good thing because it's like the ultimate carrot really. You want to try and catch them no matter where they are in their race. It sort of drags you on a little bit in my view so it worked. The whole build up starts for when you get your lid, you tuck your lid on and you get on your bike and you're sort of moving closer and closer to the start and uh, you sort of anticipate when the flag is about to drop and I, I've, this, I suppose it's what everyone does really but on this day, I was no different and rolled up to my start position. Um, built my revs up, got the clutch on right on biting point. And uh, I was waiting for the flag to drop and literally uh, the, the gent has his, has his shoulder, hand on your shoulder. Uh, and just before I thought the guy was going to drop the flag, the red light came on on the start box above the start line 
um, and all the time and box, I think they call it. So I dropped the revs, thinking, well, it's a red flag, thinking, unfortunately, someone's had an accident. So that's the race stopped. So next thing, the flag dropped. And then I was thinking, well, what do I do now? And the, the, the guy's hand came off my shoulder, so... And he literally just went like that, as if to say, on you go. Um, so I was probably sat there two, three seconds before actually realising that it was a false, false red flag, unfortunately. But that, that dropped me a bit of time. Almost immediately, as I dropped the clutch, I thought, right, I've got to just forget that, just because I've got a long race ahead of me here. Um, and I just went into full focus mode, but I, it was still in the back of my head, I've got to be honest. And I made a couple of little errors into Quarter Bridge and Brad in just the first few miles to try and settle myself down. And so the impact, whilst I don't think it was going to change the results, I think it certainly had an impact at the start of the race anyway, and where I sort of slotted in at the first sector. I probably calmed down, I would say by probably Crosby, Grieber, Grieber Castle. Just by the nature of the course, you ha well, you have to be focused the whole way around, but the the course gets, starts to get really tricky. So I think the, the fact that you, it gets like that, you have to focus even harder. So once that was done, it was just focus on the race ahead, like and get a nice, Rest of the lap into the pit, a solid pit, and then final two laps. First pit board is at the exit of Balaf, um, because it's it's enough, it's far around enough that there's there's the uh, sectors from Glen Helen and then some, uh, and the fact that I was 11 in the order, uh, number 11 in the order, it, um, by the time the higher numbers start coming around, the, the order's already settled, settling in, in my view. So I got my first board, I think it was P5, P5 or P6, but I knew there was nothing in, in that top five really, so I thought, I was actually expecting to read a lot higher to be honest, considering the issue we had at the start line. Um, Thank, thankfully, I didn't read too high, and I was able to <laughs> keep pushing on and start chipping into the the time ahead. If anything, I've I've always been trying to be faster in the first sector to Glen Helen because I've always felt like that's my weakest sector, and really almost lost sight of the others after that. But for some reason I've ended up going faster through that Ramsey sector which is which is which is good to be honest I'm, I'm not going to grumble at that um, but yeah I did notice it myself my next pit board is at exit the bungalow so they're fairly well spread out but I think it gives enough time to get the order settled in and uh, really find out where you are on, on time really um, so, yeah, and thankfully it started to, I've started to work my way up. On correct time, we, we caught up with Dean and, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was nice really. I, di I didn't know, I didn't know who I was dicing with until the first pit stop and then uh, that sort of was made fairly clear. It was like Dean and Davey, um, so just got the hammer down and went for it again. No sooner have you settled down after dropping the clutch, you're into a pit stop, and that's where you have to. That's where you, as the rider, and all your team have to remain calm and you know composed. Um, and that's a real test. It's a, it's a real like heavy, uh, some might say stressful environment, I suppose where the, the pressure's on, you know, you can't really make any blunders and, you know, whether that be from the guy who's stood in front of you to stop to taking your fuel cap out to then getting the fuel in or a suit bike race has changed the back wheel, there's a lot going on. Um, yeah, fairly, fairly frantic. And it was a, it's a splash and dash sort of a pit stop, really. 
Um, I didn't bother changing my visor. I just thought I'll just that's one more thing to go wrong. I'll just park that idea. Uh, get in, get out, and get going again, and try and chip into the rider ahead. <laughs> You have to have composure and just keep calm, just keep sipping on your drink. And uh, it's, it's quite a weird, everything sort of goes quiet, really. Um, and I've heard a few other riders say the same sort of thing. Um, it just goes a bit, this goes quiet. And you're almost having to glance down to make sure the fuel's going in and you know, everything's running smoothly. And uh, yeah, it's just like this calm uh, in, in the air. And, once the fuel cap's down, it's bang, straight back out there. I can't really remember a, a good deal about lap two, to be honest. It was, uh, I remember my pit board positions were starting to come down, which was good, which I meant I was, I was clearly going well. Um, and my pace was good. Um, I knew it was in a dice and I sort of held station the whole lap, I think it was like, it might have been third or fourth, uh, going to lap, lap two. And then lap three is where it really like clicked into place for me. It felt, it felt really good. Getting your flying lap, on, and the only flying lap of the race in the Superstock race was, uh, was quite nice. Obviously, you're going down starting your lap going down Bray Hill, you're going a lot faster because you've got the run. And obviously that uh, alters your braking going into quarter bridge as well. Um, and I felt that's one, probably one place where I was, a, I was better and stronger this year, just at one corner, I was, I was stronger into, might sound ridiculous, but when it's talking, you're talking tens of seconds, it, it helped, I think. Just, I wouldn't say I was going I wouldn't say I felt like I was going any faster. I didn't didn't feel like it was, I wasn't riding out of my skin. It was just for like a normal race to me uh, where I, I was clearly just getting on the power a bit, bit earlier and just having a go and maybe digging a bit deeper. But it didn't feel unsafe. It felt, everything felt nice and smooth really, which is the way I like to ride the TT course. I'm sure I read P2. And the, the gap at that stage, I think I actually took a, a, a chunk of time out of Peter, obviously he was leading the race at that stage. And that, that felt pretty good because I felt like I was, I was clearly riding good for the first part of that lap. And it was mainly a, a case of, right, finish the lap off now and finish it really strong. And uh, I just started to piece all the, all the sectors together quite nicely. And um, as it turned out, it was, it was the strongest, my strongest lap of the fortnight. So I was, I was happy with that. Just hit me apexes. I didn't really, I was probably on the brakes a little bit harder into, into the tight right hander there, but I just get it stopped, get it turned, and these are in damp patches and felt nice and smooth. And just, yeah, gave a Dixie and came out to start straight there. And uh, it was, it was lovely, a lovely finish to a race anyway considering where we started. I thought, oh, did I get second or was it third, you know, and what was the gap to the front? And uh, I think it sort of got to, I think it got down to like 11 and a half seconds and it went to 12, I think, by the time the flag came out. So it was good. I think when Rob Temple, when I guided him into the the winner's enclosure and just, just did, was either going to be a piece or but yeah, you know, second like so I just assumed I was second and uh, I thought oh that's a, that's a really good result and I was really happy um, it's the best race I've had around the TT for a long time and uh, to, to finish on that lap speed was I was well chuffed first person I saw was uh, my mechanic uh, Dave Castle and 
he was well chuffed and big arms out, big hug and uh, yeah, and Stevie and hey, all the team came in, my wife, my kids, you know, family was ace. Clive was well chuffed um, and first thing he said to me was the, the lap speed that I did on my last lap, so he was, uh, he was well chuffed, yeah. So he, he came away with, with now the fastest Honda around the TT course and fourth fastest lap. Uh, so yeah, with the, just whilst we didn't win the race, I was ecstatic. I was well chuffed with with how I rode, and uh, the, the team were well chuffed as well. Fast lap, yeah, one three three. It was good. Um, I, th I think I, I, I lost on the last lap. I actually rolled it a little bit from the leg to onto Kronka body because I felt like I had a bit of a vibration through the back end of my bike and I was just trying to think is this actually have I just made this up in my head or have I got a bit of an issue going on here and I thought I'll give it a little bit of a, a bit of a roll not not enough to again make any difference but I'd lost a little bit of time there a few tenths and uh sounded like I did make it up in my head because there's nothing wrong with the tyre anyway <laughs> it was all spot on Second on the box, it was it was lovely. Just the grandstand was full, um, and it was just a nice end to a good day's racing for us. So we're, we're happy. There's not a, a great deal I could have done any differently. I, I rode hard. I did the fastest lap of the race. Yes, the, there was a start line issue there, which was totally out of my control. But I don't think I couldn't have done anything differently. I, I, well, I did the fastest lap of the race and. The, the, I suppose the potential to go one better was there on the day, but unfortunately it didn't happen. That's the way it is. We have to get on with it. Just getting like big waves through into, into Solby Bridge and Ramsey and, you know, it was quite nice. It was getting waves everywhere, don't get me wrong, but yeah, it was a, quite a special sort of a feeling really, although I'm not really focusing on that. <laughs> I was, focus on the road ahead but it's you can't help but notice it you know a lot of I've got so much support here on the island and yeah the Honda Fireblade was unreal it was um, just really comfortable to ride you know and we have to we have to push you know if we want a result we have to really really push and I need a bike to do that and uh, I certainly had a bike there on the day that was uh, brilliant to ride and enabled me to do a P2 and fastest lap of the race. Alaman TT, it's the ultimate spectacle. Get yourselves here. Mm -hmm.